What is good, everyone? This is your host, Deanna Radulescu with Label Free Podcast. To live your best life, you must live label free. As always, bringing you incredible guests from all over the world. So sit back, relax, and tune in. My next guest is a serial entrepreneur. We love our entrepreneurs. He's an architect, a builder, also a podcast host, and a professional fisherman. Please welcome Lance Keiko. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, it's actually Lance Psycho, so nobody, nobody else forgets that. It's all good. <laughs> I'm so sorry to put you on the spot like that, but that's even even when I get to do that, it's a good icebreaker, isn't it? Yeah. No, you know what? I forgot to ask you to yeah. pronounce that, and I usually get it pretty right nine times out of ten, but who would have thought you pronounced it like that? The only person that's, I'm 40 years old, and the only person that's ever got it right was an Indian telemarketer. One time they got it right. I couldn't believe it. It blew my mind. Yeah, I almost, I almost like then I almost wanted to buy whatever they were selling just because they got it right. <laughs> oh yeah, I mean, I yeah, exactly because that's very. I mean, it's spelled C A Y K O, but it's pronounced mm -hmm. psycho. Like, are you psycho? <laughs> yeah, a little bit. Apparently, with business and uh, all the stuff I do, somehow I manage to get you know six hours of sleep with everything that I do. But yeah, a little bit psycho. Yeah, well, we have to. I think we're people that are driven type A, and uh, our entrepreneurs have to be a little bit crazy, you know. Yeah, we're special people. We're crazy special people, I think. Yes, we're all part of the same tribe. So you do a lot of things. And like I said before we started recording, um, you are living your best life, following your purpose in all areas of your life. That's what I try to do. Yeah, 100%. I think, uh, you know, I, I experienced a big bout of burnout in about in about 2020. And it coincided with with the COVID and the lockdowns and the masking and all all, all the other stuff. And, and then at the same time, my children, uh, I have four children, uh, two stepchildren, two biological. They, they're all, we were starting to hit their teens, some tweens. And we got to the point, it was like shocking to us. I should have listened to my mother. And she was like, they're going to not want to hang out with you yeah. at a certain <laughs> point. And, it's, and it's, you're, you're going to find yourself sort of devastated in a way. So that was my sort of midlife crisis. And, and what I did is then I, you know, I, I had always been a, a hard worker, somebody who's ultra productive, very disciplined, creative, all of those things to, you know, to, to build all the companies up to that point and everything else. But, but then I really took, you know, living a lot more seriously. So I found myself with a lot of time and, and I had enough money to, at th this point in my life where I remembered a, a goal and a childhood dream, and that was to become a professional fisherman. And so I just became completely obsessed again with fishing and hiking in the mountains. And so, um, you know, I started, started on that path and that sort of led me back to just being refreshed Yeah. And much more sort of, I, I don't even know if I like balance, just living life to the max. I love that. So I feel like when you are living your life, living the life that you create, that you've always wanted, you are just so much more energized and like you said, fulfilled. And I think that that is like, something that we all strive for. Some of us know where we're going, you know what that means for us, and others are lost and don't know which way to go. So congratulations for knowing like that what fills your heart with joy. <laughs> yeah, thank you very much. Well, I feel very blessed. You know, people yeah. tell me all the time they say they say I don't know how you get all everything you everything you have to do every day because it, you know, they'll see me posting on social media or something or they'll just be close friends or, or my wife or stuff like that. And I just I just tell them I, I feel actually very blessed that I yeah. do what I want every day um, business wise professional you know personal wise and all of that sort of stuff so I, I don't ever feel like I'm going to work per se my brother you know I contrast that with my brother who honestly dreads his job and I, I really try to have empathy in that kind of way you know and I, I try not to confuse sympathy with empathy either like I'm not sympathetic to, right. to, to him I don't feel sorry for him or anything I just look and I go oh that means I should be thankful and right. that I'm that I'm doing whatever I want to do every day. Yeah. Yeah, I can relate. So I'm the oldest of five. So and I can attest to the having being the oldest and having siblings that turn go turn, turn into teenagers is pretty rough. <laughs> Even yeah. though I was a teenager once at one point, but going through that cuz my father was a deadbeat, so I was like a surrogate parent with my mom. So mm -hmm. I understand that um the fishing, the fishing part, I actually I I, I can understand how you'd love fishing. It's very relaxing. Is that it? How long have you been fishing for? Well, my whole life, obviously. I mean, I grew up in a family that, in, when we grew up in Northwest North Dakota, I grew up in a town of a uh, population of like 500 people, okay. graduated with a class of 20. And so it's very outdoorsy. You know, yeah. there's only so many options for you to do. And I just had always loved fishing. 
um, from a very early age. In fact, my mother, you know, everybody, I think, does this exercise at least one time in elementary school. The teacher asks you, draw what you want to be, write about what you want to be. And 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 for me, it was I was like, well, and I think with the phrase she used was something to the tune of whatever whatever you love to do most. Yeah, it, it, that's what, see if you can do that. And I was like, well, fishing, like that's the best thing in the world. I mean, you're out there hanging out with your buddies and 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 whatever, and it's like that's the dream. So I wrote about that, and my mother to this day, you know, when she talks to my wife or a- any other new friends or anything, she's like, yeah, that's what Lance always wanted to be. He always wanted to be a professional fisherman. And so uh, when I got to, again when I when I got to the when I got to the so it would have been the age like 37, 38. Um, the average male in America lives to about 76. So for me, that was like, okay, this is midlife. Like maybe I'll live longer. Hopefully I will, you know, 80, 90, whatever. Yeah. But, uh, when I, so when I got back into it, I just, it just rekindled all the memories because I was a single dad for about three years. Wow. My, my ex-wife, uh, abandoned me and the children and I raised them all by myself on my own. And oh. when, when you do that, and then you're building, you know, are building our architecture company yeah. and just trying to do the right thing every single day especially as a single dad like you don't have time to do anything else so you're just in kid mode constantly uh which is which is you know so that i had there was no i mean i would take them fishing a little bit but like i'm not going to drag them up like i do now starting at nine thousand feet in the air in colorado and then climbing to twelve thousand, right. you know every day like i'll take them there once in a while and they'll grow in a little bit uh but for me that's really what it came to. And then the other thing too is like with with all the COVID stuff, I'm such a freedom person. Um, and I, and I obviously I think that comes my my love for freedom in, in almost every single way really relates back to I don't feel like I'm going to work because I feel like I'm free. Yeah. I'm choosing I'm choosing my path every single day. Yes, I have clients who need things done certain ways, but I can still I guess I still have a chessboard yeah. to play with it and, and, and all and all of that certain way. So going up in the mountains like that solo is a freeing experience for me. You know, I was just camping two nights ago with one of my best friends, Bill, and we were talking about it, about how our blood pressure just goes down as soon as we're looking west and driving up into the mountains, away from all the people and the chaos and everything. And I said, well, you know, I have an opposite effect, Bill. I said, uh, I actually start to feel, I used to feel sad. Like when I would come down the mountain, I I would actually start to feel a little bit sad. And now it's kind of subsided. I'm pretty evened out about that. Mm-hmm. But there's just something about that. I've read some of the best books um, just hiking by myself in the mountains that have changed my life in the last couple of years. One of them is uh, Train Your Empathy. And the other one is Marcus Aurelius's Meditations. I think every every young every young man especially should read that. I think every, every woman should read that too. It's just a, uh, it really helps you understand stoicism and what it means. And it's not, you know, the blank face. Right. Just sitting, you're not saying anything in this podcast, making it boring. It's, <laughs> <laughs> it is finding yourself in chaos. Yeah. For example, and seeing where the chess moves are, so you can get out of chaos mm. and recognizing that every negative has a positive. And that's one of the things I've really tried to, that that's really come to fruition and boiled up from the truth that I try to live in life is like, I actually get excited when a negative happens now. Yeah, because I because you can't have like the the way the world works, right? Is like electricity doesn't work unless there's a negative and a positive. Like you have to have both connections in order for that work. And like we are literally energized beings in this universe. The universe is energized, and so now what I've recognized, like I've had enough negative stuff happen. Even even when my ex wife left, like I've had enough negative stuff happen for me then just like to see the positives that come afterwards. Yeah, and I'm like, oh my gosh, something negative's happened. Like something really positive. It might sound yeah. crazy. It might no. sound psycho, but it's that's what <laughs> I'm at. Psycho, I'm psycho. <laughs> yeah. No, I totally read that. Thank you for saying that because I, I think you have to go through a series of life changing events to actually appreciate that. To know that if something negative is happening, that there's going to be something good on the other side of it. And so I love that. That is amazing. Thank you. Yeah. 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 And I, I try to share that with every show I go on or, or every kind of public speaking event that I do, because I think it, there's a lot of negativity. I mean, you just, you know, even if you take a media blackout, you know, let's say you shut down your social media for 30 days and do like Dave Rubin does. I, I don't know if you know who that is. Oh but yeah, No, I don't think I could do that. That's my. Oh, yeah. <laughs> well, yeah. With us as public. Yeah. People who do pot, it, it's tough. 
But, you know, even if you do, what I'm getting at is like, you're still going to, you're, that information is still going to creep in in some different way. And like, that's the media is negative no matter, you know, no matter what it is, unless we're doing positive shows like this. Yeah. And so knowing that negative, you know, understanding that negativity, negativity and, and just recognizing it sort of in a meditation sort of way. Mm. And then, and then realizing that like, yep, then the positive is going to come. I even tell my children this too. They're like, they're like, what do you mean? And I'm like, yeah. think about it this way. If a, if you push a swing, right. And you pretend like you, the push is the negative, then the positive comes back. Like, I'm like, this is just physics guys. This is just physics. Yeah. And what do they, so do they understand that? Cause I mean, that's a good, that's great ad- advice and wisdom for young people. I think my son gets it now. Yeah. My daughter is only 14. My son is eight. My son is 18. Uh, those are my biologicals. And my son went through, we actually, he and I did wilderness uh, therapy last summer. Uh, he went he went to a real dark place, uh, got into some drugs, was starting to fail school. And so I was like, well, I know what fixed me. <laughs> I know what fixed me when I was getting going through sort of a not depression or anything like that, but definitely burnout, just burnout, at, you know, like when I said in 2020. And I, I said, well, we're going to go. We're going to we're going to, you know, shut the phones off like there's no phones because there's no service up there anyway. And every weekend we would do wilderness therapy. So we would just go up there and be men together. And do man stuff and hike around and get sweaty and dirty and, s- and sleepy and all of that. And uh, that sort of cured him. I mean, and by sort of, I mean it did. And so he, he the way, what I told him is I said, Kyler, I think what you're experiencing at the age of 17 is what a lot of people maybe at 25 experience. Yeah. You know, you, you're, you're just going through this hell and this fire earlier rather than other people. That's what you need to recognize. Like God is trying to teach you a lesson sooner than other people because he has a he has a different plan for you than maybe typical people and and then that really resonated with him and he you know he's now he's he's great uh he graduated high school this last may um he's he's drug free and he's uh, going to be a diesel tech uh technician he's going to school at at lincoln tech so we're proud of him and he's moving on up that's beautiful like wow Congrats. I mean, I've never had a man come on my show and say that the white abandoned him and his children that had to be really tough yeah, oh, absolutely. Yeah, that was one of the hardest. You know what's so crazy about that too? Like, so the negative and the positive again. Yeah. Absolutely, one hundred percent. That one of the hardest things. Yeah. That I've ever, that I've ever gone through. I mean, she was even trying to take them. You know, I'm living here. I live in Longmont, Colorado. She was trying to take them away to, to live with this guy who was just a horrible guy. I found out he was a felon and all these other oh. nasty things. Uh, you know, so we were in this weird heated custody battle, which just ended up sort of being a facade at the end. Like she, she, you know, she conceded and then eventually moved back after three years and, and we're in good terms now and stuff like that. That's good. Uh, yeah, yeah. So it all, it all worked out. She just had some growing up to do. We had, we had children very young. Uh, I was, I was eight, she was 18 and I was, I was 21. So, oh boy. Yeah. You were very young. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah, exactly. (laughs) Uh, but yes, very, very difficult. And like every day was a str- every day was just hard. It was just like you- trying to trying yeah try. I had to be that rock for yeah. for the kids. Um, I thankfully had my best my best friend who's my business partner Al Gore lived right upstairs, so that was a little bit helpful. Yeah, he would watch me every once in a while and give me just kind of a tiny break. I have a great family who would take him for a couple of weeks in the summer, that sort of thing. But the but the so that's all the negative stuff. But yeah. the positive stuff was when I look back at that is I, I still say this every once in a while. Every once in a while I'll post it on social media when I'm having one of those days where I just kind of feel uh, like letting some feelings out and that yeah. is I was the brokest I've ever been. Um uh, because that was when we, when I had those kids all by myself, it was from twenty eleven to twenty fourteen. Mm-hmm. We're still in the first like four years of startup mode for F9 Productions, our architecture firm. The economy sucked. We're coming out of the Great Recession. I was, I would, I was, I was a hundred percent paycheck to paycheck. Yeah. And you know, we weren't making any any money. It was just barely making it. But that was the one of the happiest times of my life because it was just concentrating on the kids. It was just a hundred percent dad mode. And even though we were didn't have any money, it. So that just reminds me, even if you know, we I'm, we make a pretty good change now. We're we're a successful firm. Um, and all of that and, and everything that we do. And, uh, you know, I don't have any anxiety about money anymore or anything like that. But what I like about that lesson is like it could all get taken away and I'd still be happy. Yeah. I'd still be happy with all with all of that because happiness is like the regression to the mean, I think, of your happiness. In other words, like there's a ve- there's very highs 
there's very lows and like you got to live your life sort of in this mean area yes oh my gosh i love it <laughs> you're like checking off all the boxes so you've been an entrepreneur for what 20 years then uh yeah i would say that because and here's why is because uh you know i grew up um when i was 13 is when i kind of got my first real job okay so i grew up between a sugar beet farm and a cattle ranch and my dad was basically running the sugar beet farm under his dad i tried irrigating those sugar beets one summer in northwest Nevada to with him i lasted about a week and i just i just could i just hated it we didn't get along really well mm. back in the day um and, and the work was was just not my not my can of worms and so he said well you got to do something i said you're right so I said, well, how, how about I call up your, your friend Bruce? He's a contractor, right? Yeah. He's like, yep. And I, so I called up Bruce that night and I said, hey, I'll do I'll do whatever it, whatever it takes. I've always been interested in building. I need to get a job. And he's like, sure, I'll pay you seven twenty five an hour and you can be my gopher. And I was like, cool, what's that? And he goes, well, when you go, you can go for this, you'll go for that. Yeah. And you're done going for the things. Then you can get up on the roof and you can learn how to roof. And I was the best gopher you ever had. And... We did 80 roofs that summer, so we'd get up at the crack of dawn, tear them off by 10 a.m., put them back on by like 2 or 3 p.m. Super hard work, but I just loved it. I loved like the camaraderie. The whole culture of construction was just everything for me. You could see what you could see what you got done for the day. Very, very rewarding in those kinds of ways. And then about the middle of the summer, one thing, Bruce kind of changed my life because he Nobody had ever explained to me. My mom, is, my mom and dad are not business people. They are. Dad was a farmhand. Now he's just kind of a a jack of all trades sort of thing. Now, mom has worked at the same job for 40 years, a dental assistant. Now she runs a dental office, but they're not risk takers. They're not entrepreneur yeah. people. Bruce was. And yeah. Bruce, what Bruce said to me was, Hey, I'm paying you 75, 725 an hour. What do you think I'm charging the clients? And I go, 725 an hour. And he laughed. And I was like, well, I don't know. What, what are you getting at? And he goes, well, I charge them three to four times what I'm paying you. And I have, cause I have to, I have to account for overhead taxes, insurance, the risk, all the other things. After I'm done paying for that stuff, after I'm done paying you, I get something called profit. Right. And I saw the contrast. It was sort of like, was, Bruce was sort of my rich dad, even though he wasn't rich, rich, but for that area, like he didn't worry about money. He didn't have anxiety about money. Yeah. He wasn't doing lavish things, but he, just, there's no anxiety. My dad, dad was the poor dad, like, like the book, like Robert yeah. Kiyosaki's yeah. book. Great book. And- when when he got to that multiplication level and I thought, oh, well, I should be like Bruce. Yeah. Well, then every every summer what I would do is I, I made it a, a point to learn a different trade all the way up until I was 18. So like one summer was with Bruce was roofing, obviously, and then framing and doing them windows and finished carpentry and all the other things. So I was, I was like, I'm going to be like Bruce. Yeah. And so I started my first business when I was when I was 18. Wow. After I'd done enough trades. And it was just small, like carpentry, handyman stuff, but I learned how to interact with clients. And I, I just did that all the way through um, college. And then the reason why we started F9 Productions, we Alex and I both graduated top of our class, 2008, North Dakota State University, Masters of Architecture. Economy crashed. Everybody knows what happened in 2008, 2009. Mm -hmm. I was seeing the writing on the wall. I mean, my bosses down here in Boulder had no, they had no work. We were just kind of scrolling around the computer pretending to act busy sort of thing eventually got laid off what I had what I would what I had done up to then was I was like oh, well I'm gonna start putting out Craigslist ads and fall back on my handyman work because I'm not about to go live up in North Dakota again like I love I moved to Colorado for the the mountains the trout you know the, the weather all of that and I never had to take unemployment insurance I, I'm personally proud of that I know some people are like well you know you can take it I'm like no I just have my own sense of pride with that yeah. and work for cash and then eventually landed some design clients and we started our firm about 10 years before we were supposed to but now looking back at it like I have friends right now that I graduated with who are 40 and they're just gonna start and I'm like man we have a decade wow. ahead of them that's freaking awesome yeah that is awesome what a great story Thank I feel you. like you have you got a book in there, just like the whole thing with the wilderness, with your son being a single father in the business. Like, I, I, I think there's gonna be a book coming from you soon. <laughs> yeah, um, that's not a. I hey, that was it was either it was either fishing or the book. I'm not joking, because okay. that's what I thought about doing, to, but I was, but I'm, you know, so I'm, I'm with you. Like, I feel like I should just start recording myself when I'm hiking and talking, and then 
get yeah. the drop rough draft out that way. There you go. I think I'm I'm all in. I, I I'm I'm voting yes. But thank you. Um, tell us about inside the firm, the podcast. I have so many more questions for you, but you know we're getting close on time, so we might have to have a follow up part two in a couple months after this is released. That would be cool. Yeah. 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 Inside the firm podcast is so what happened. So if we started our firm in 2010, mm-hmm. and then we got to 20 2017, that's when we started the podcast. And and why that's significant and why I'm saying that is because that's seven years. Yeah. Most people, a lot of people who own businesses know that, and if you don't, it's totally cool, but they know that the in the first seven years, that's when typically most startups fail. Yeah. So we got to year seven and went, I think we're going to make it. <laughs> we should tell, we should, <laughs> we should tell people about our story. We should, we, we're not the type of architects. A lot of architects are really close to the best. Yeah. They, they don't want to talk about how they practice. They don't want to talk about how running. Matter of fact, most architects are not business people. And we are half business, half art, architect, not half artist, half scientist sort of thing. Right. Yeah. And so that's why we started the we started the podcast. And and basically we 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 went back in time. So like when you if you started episode zero mm-hmm. on our show, we went went dug up old emails and everything and basically told the whole startup story and how and how we did it and then we we when we you know seven years later we're still doing the show and since then you know we've documented many of our toughest projects toughest clients best clients all all of those sorts of things and then we added a monday morning show where we interview entrepreneurs so there's two two episodes a week but that's the whole idea behind the firm is like we're bringing you inside the firm and giving you an inside look and even if you're not an architect there's so many good just business stories uh, and and lessons that we just I, I want to make more bit better business people. I think better if we have more people doing business, voting patterns are going to change, happiness is going to change, everything is going to change. It, it going to start there. Yeah, hence the reason for our shows. <laughs> yes. Where can people find you, connect with you, and learn more about the firm, the podcast, all of those good things? Yeah. And your fishing, and your fishing, of course. Oh yes, thank you. Yeah. Uh, so if anybody wants to link in with me, I will link in with you. Uh, no problem. You just go to LinkedIn.com and and type in uh, Lance, L-A-N-C-E, last name Psycho, C-A-Y-K-O. That's C-A-Y-K-O, and I will link in with you. If you want to keep up with anything that we do architecture or, or building-wise, just go to F9Productions.com. You can sign up for our newsletter there, keep you posted. Uh, inside the firm podcast.com. You, you can subscribe to all the channels there, and then... Yes, check out Fishing. Fishing with Lance on Newsbreak and YouTube, and you can come on adventures with me. Awesome. You guys, I'm going to put those links in the show notes. So if you connect with Lance, his story, and everything that he's doing in his life, where he got to where he's at, and just anything related to architecture or you know um, business, go ahead and reach out to him and follow him and check out his fishing stories. Uh, or adventures, I guess. Fishing yeah. adventures. <laughs> This is the part of the show, Lance, where I like to ask for less words of wisdom or advice. What would you like to leave with us today? Oh, for anybody out there listening who is apprehensive about taking the leap and and starting a business or doing anything like that, just jump. The more you think about it and the more you wait, the the there's a there's a chance the chances of you actually doing it are are going to go down. The best time to literally start a business is take it from me is in a great recession or a great depression because you'll never be as hungry as as you as you could possibly be you're never and that hunger is going to push you to be the most creative you can be in terms of the way you're going to go out and get clients the most lean you're ever going to be and you're going to you're going to be successful in that way so put yourself in the fire because it's just like a diamond right yeah. a diamond is created under the a very intense pressure if you don't have that pressure you're never going to be a diamond Woo! Yeah, I like that. That was awesome. Lance, thank you so much for sharing your story. Like I said, I want to have you back because I have a lot more questions to dig in more into the personal stuff and your growth and your journey with that. Uh, I loved hearing just kind of like a, you know, a 50 foot view of everything that you've gone through in the last 20 years is pretty exciting to see, to hear about your growth. So thank you very much for sharing with us today. Thank you so much for having me on. It was a pleasure. You're welcome. You guys, this is your host, Deanna Radulescu with Label Free Podcast. To live your best life, you must live Label Free. As always, don't forget to subscribe, follow, rate, review, comment, share, all those good things. And I'll be back soon with more dynamic guests.